Let's go. And we will see. Today is the last Monday in October, the 30th day of October 2023. And you know what? This is your life boy today. And one more thing, you have to be on guard. As we go into your life boy today, you'll get to know what exactly you need to be on guard about. But for your life boy today, we will be taking a scriptural reading from the epistle of the first epistle of Paul to Timothy. And that will be right from the beginning of the epistle. 1 Timothy chapter 1, be on guard. Let's go now. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, our hope, to Timothy, my true child, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, not to occupy themselves with myths and endless genealogies which promote speculations rather than divine training that is in faith. Whereas the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they are making assertions. Now, we know that the law is good if anyone uses it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, immoral persons, sodomites, kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with whom I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful by appointing me to his service, though I formerly blasphemed and persecuted and insulted him, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been on any platform, especially uh, especially for politics, sometimes for religion, and people just argue off points, you know? Sometimes you are even sure they know the truth, but because they are just determined to support a cause which is unjust, which is immoral, which is not quite in tone with what the generality of the people think, they will just continue to argue along those lines. 
That is also sometimes what happens when you are trying to let people understand issues of faith and then they are discussing issues of the genealogy. Oh, God did not have two sons or he didn't have any son at all. Oh, the mother of this is this and the father. Pray, who is interested in all of this? What we are interested in is that God sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to this world and he shed his blood for you and for me and he rose again and as he shed the blood that was for the atonement of my sins and as he uh, rose again it is for my glory for everyone's glory who would align himself with him this was what paul was writing to timothy who was like his son in faith whom he had always mentored the other person that he wrote such a thing to was also Titus. Titus was in Crete while um, Timothy was in Ephesus. And when Paul was writing to both of them for Macedonia, he wanted to be sure that they would remain in the faith. They would be on guard. They would not be distracted by endless arguments that are senseless. They would not go off point. And rather than driving home the point concerning Jesus Christ, be arguing aimlessly about issues of the law that had been overtaken by events to the extent that they have been reformed, they have been simplified, they have been made easier, and all you need to do is just be in Christ Jesus, and they have the Holy Spirit, and you will just be on course with God the Father. So these are things you also need to be on guard for. But as a quick aside, when I was reading that, I observed that they mentioned kidnappers. So they always had bandits and kidnappers in those days too, just like we have in Nigeria today. You need to be on guard about such people who come with all kinds of funny doctrines. Funny doctrines that even real custodians of such faith will tell you they don't agree with. And on account of that, they start all kinds of Boko Haram, banditry, all kinds of evil kidnapping people, sometimes forcing them to change from one faith to the other. You need to be on guard. You need to be on guard to make sure that you are well grounded in the word of God to the extent that nobody can just brainwash you and take you off course. You've got to be on guard. And part of being on guard is first being in-house. You need to be on guard against certain things, so you must stand for certain things. You must stand for Christ. You must be in Christ. And that's why I'm calling you now. I'm sending out an invitation to you right now that you need to be in Christ. And when you get into Christ fully, then you need to be on guard so that you do not backslide. You do not get carried away by profane bumblings and all kinds of idle arguments that do not have anything to do with genuine faith. If you are set for the experience of giving your life to Christ, just say this prayer, say, Lord Jesus, Thank you for this word that I have just had today. I also want to be on guard. And therefore I say, Father, for, forgive me of all the sins of the past. From today, I accept you as Lord and Savior. I know you died and rose for me, for my sake, and that now you are in glory. And I want to reign in glory with you. So accept me, Lord, even as I accept you as Lord and Savior from today. I pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you just said that prayer, welcome to the family of faith. You need to find a Bible-believing church where you can learn the more to be on guard. I always recommend that you join us in the Anglican Church of the PSL Extension. You can join us tomorrow as our midweek, midweek service, Tuesdays. Every Tuesday is our midweek service. We call it Search the Scriptures, and we actually do Search the Scriptures from 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Just one hour, six, you're back home, or at least off from the church grounds. And on Sundays, 9 o'clock in the morning, you can either, either join us physically or at least virtually for the first 30 minutes for a Bible study. And that will be in the Chapel Hall of the Olive Branches Middle and High School. So when you come and go, you go and drive or here's the extension of Shubu. And you can see some bank account details on the screen right now. That's for the church. We are building the church and we are on guard to be sure that nothing distracts us from doing what is right in the presence of the Lord. And as you go home, out, anywhere that you are going right now, depending on your schedule of duties, you need to say this prayer. Say, Lord, help me to give myself to continuously abide by the sound doctrine of your word, that I will not be distracted by profane arguments, but remain 
being on guard and remaining in you all the days of my life. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So go out today. Be on guard. And it will be well with you. God bless.